Welcome everyone to our episode 53 of the podcast Cultivating a New Generation. In today's episode, we have an amazing guest, Lisa Beck, and we are going to speak about Love Yourself to, to Produce Health. Lisa Beck has a passion for helping people heal from the inside out, which is very resonating with what we are promoting in this podcast. And with her degree in athletic training and various certification in movement, corrective exercise and functional nutrition, Lisa has spent the past 18 years helping people physically heal, improve their vitality. Lisa is also the author of An Infinite Love, Your Journey Toward Happiness, Connection and Loving Yourself the most. Contributing author to the best-selling uh, Blue Talks book series, Business Life and Universe, Volume 4, along with being a self-love empowerment coach and a speaker. She helps busy career-driven women find balance and rediscover their inner greatness by falling back in love with, the, with themselves. When she's taking time to fulfill her soul, you will find Lisa writing, traveling, golfing, working out, working on self-development and playing with her niece and nephew and loving her dog, Dax. Yes. No? <laughs> so yes. that's an amazing bio and an amazing journey, Lisa. So I want to begin this conversation by just knowing how did you arrive to where you are right now? What is your yeah. life story? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, David, very much for first having me on the podcast. I'm super excited to share my story with your listeners. Yeah. And exactly like my bio said, uh, for the last 18 years, I've worked in the health and wellness industry, working with sports teams, helping the athletes with their injuries, and then kind of transitioned that into just regular citizens and helping them with their injured or have a surgery, helping them feel better physically. And what I learned through this journey is that with each physical injury or ailment or chronic condition that we have, there is many times an emotional tie to this injury. Mm -hmm. And a lot, we can heal from physical injuries very easily. There's a lot of doctors, there's a lot of therapists that help us along the way, but we forget about healing our emotional injuries. And many times we end up suppressing these emotions and they're pushed down and they're pushed down and we don't deal with them and we don't realize how connected our mental body and our emotional body is to our actual physical body. We are one mental, mentally, physically, emotionally. And so it was as I was continuing down my path and my career, my career was taking off. I was feeling in my own life, a little burnt out, a little stuck, a little like what, you know, I'm making money. I have all the accolades after my name. I have a booming business, but I'm not fulfilled. So like, what is off here? And it was one day I was having coffee with a girlfriend and she asked if I was dating anyone at the time. And it, the question caught me off guard because all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, I'm not even happy with who I am how can I be happy in a relationship or, or how can someone be happy with me when I'm not even happy with me? And so that began a whole new chapter of my life of exploring the internal aspect of who I was, of what does it mean to, to heal myself from the inside out? And if I first started looking at um, asking myself a lot of questions of like, okay, if I'm not happy, what led to this? where did it start? Was it one little incident or was it kind of a, a lot of little things along the way? Why am I not filled in, fulfilled in my career? I love what I do. I love my clients. Where is the disconnect there? And so I started doing a lot of research and I started listening to a lot of podcasts. I started, started diving into personal development and 
looking to coaches and just bringing, receiving all this information that I could to help find out like, who am I and what do I really love? And, and then I started journaling and just writing and, and taking note of my experience with my clients of helping them physically heal and how we tapped into their emotions that are tied to their injuries. And pretty soon I had so many journal pages. I'm like, okay, well, I have a hundred pages. So I'm either going to turn this into a book or I just keep journaling. And so it was at that point when I brought my journaling to a publishing company and they said, you really have something here that I think a lot of people can benefit from. And so then I went through the publishing process of, of publishing a book. And, and in my book, I talk a lot about my personal life, personal stories and things that happened to me that really caused me to look back and ask a lot of the questions of like, why did this happen? Or why was I triggered? Why, what does that mean to be triggered emotionally? And how did I react? How could I react? What makes me happy? And, um, and so I, each chapter has a bunch of different lessons and takeaways. And then each chapter also has a lot of call to action. So do, this is what I did to help me work through this problem. And so from that, then I decided, I really enjoy this work. And so why don't I speak about empowerment and self-love and help coach others in the same area? Because I know if I was having this unfulfilled and stuck feeling that I know a bunch of other people are too. And, and so I started this journey right as the pandemic started happening worldwide. So it was a great transition for me because that was the time when a lot of people were really like, okay, I'm at home now, what is happening? My world is changing. And it's a great time to, and continue to, to reevaluate our values and where we are in our life. And am I really happy? And what does it mean to be fulfilled? And, and what does it take to get there? And, and a lot of us have limiting beliefs and our mind is our greatest gift and our biggest weakness because our entire world is, our mind. So our reality is what we have created. And it starts with thoughts in our mind, whether our world is great or whether our world is really difficult. It is because we created this in our mind. And so that's kind of my, a little bit of my story of, and I'm still working physically with people. And now I kind of tie in a lot of the emotional healing and, um, and, and now I am really, really fulfilled and, it, and it's a continual journey. So for me, I'm really passionate about passion and what, what am I passionate about? And then exploring that realm and how can I make money following this passion? And, and so my career is, uh, there's a lot of freedom in it and I love that. And it's kind of this journey of always searching and always seeking. And that's what fills me up. Wow. It's really, really amazing the resemblance to the journey that I also lived and I also uh, reflected a lot about what was happening with me and I also published a book which is right mm -hmm. behind me and that that book is also pieces of my story but mainly is a fictional story where I try to place the science and the struggle of of what is happening with you with when you when your worlds collide because it's like the world of the beliefs that you pick up from your parents from the external Society. environment mm -hmm. with the world that you your inner self is already speaking and you are more um sensitive to listen because you get out from the noise and because you took time to reflect, to pause, and to witness your life uh, backwards, to see all of those things that, that, that you mentioned. What happened with me? Is it because of the examples that I saw? Is it because a um, certain kind of relationship that probably caused some damage? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you need those those moments of peace, those pauses, and and as you mentioned, these last two years when this uh, chaos began, it was a time to pause for everyone, 
and it was obligatory. So yeah. you have to do it whether you like it or not. Many people, I don't know, just got distracted and did a lot of things, but a lot bunch of people started to reflect about their lives. And, and that's the power that you are going to find when you really love yourself. That's an act of self-love. Absolutely. And I don't know about you, or I'm, and I'm sure you found this on your journey as well, but the more I was able to reflect and look at different relationships in my life, whether they're romantic or platonic or um, business or personal, I was able to see them through a different lens and have a lot more compassion for myself and for the other person and, and see that they are also going through their own journey as I am going through my own journey. And we have two people with different backgrounds and different ideals and different values coming together. And we're going to have a little disconnect in, in realizing that, oh, okay, I, I see that from a different perspective. And it just allowed me to have deeper connections and more intimate relationships with the people that I love because I'm able to be a lot more compassionate and have a lot more empathy for them and their journey. And it also allowed me to empower myself and set very firm boundaries in the way that I wanted to be treated and to recognize that people treat me how I let them treat me. So if I let someone take advantage of me and walk all over me and disrespect me, it's because I have not set a boundary and a boundary could be just distancing yourself or it could be cutting that person out of your life. It could be a various different boundaries, but it wasn't until I realized that where my relationships with people dramatically changed. Yes. And that's a very important point that it's very helpful that you bring it because those boundaries uh, talk about more of the love that you have for yourself and the the knowledge that you are acquiring of yourself. And it is not that disrespect to other people. It is just um, placing the, I mean, I, I always compare it with when you are probably pay, playing poker and you show your cards. <laughs> so it's opening your cards and it's being transparent and it's knowing yourself and, and saying, you know what, this is something that is non, non-negotiable. This is something that I will don't accept because I already know that I don't like those kind of things mm -hmm. in my life. I don't life. like to feel that way. Yeah, I don't like to feel. And I. this is not something that we can talk about. And those are the things that we can be flexible and negotiate and start having a different journey from, from those. And also knowing the other person and, and helping many times to reflect on their journey and see how much they know about themselves because many times also they haven't made the work and probably you are by just showing your your things you are helping them to mm -hmm. reflect and to say okay i think i like this and that and I can negotiate on, on these topics. So part of, of our journeys, I, I see it as a school room that we are always trying to learn pieces of ourselves. And, Very much so. And it is in those times when we have the, the courage to see those dark paths and put some light in them so that we can see how, as you mentioned, people act based on what they have inside, no? Mm -hmm. And I learned one of my biggest takeaways that I learned on my journey is, and especially as, as women, we get caught up in the um, idea of self-care is, is selfish. You know, we're taking care, and, and men too, um, I'm better speaking from a, a female perspective, but... Yeah you know, we're taking care of ourselves and family and career. And then it feels too self. Oh, if I take care of, spend time on myself, oh, that's too selfish. But one thing that I learned is the more 
I care for me and keep my energy high in my bucket full of vitality and, and wealth and health, the more I can give back to other people, the more I can care for other people, the more my bucket overflows with what I'm filling it with. And if I'm filling it with joy and love and compassion and happiness, then that's going to spill out to other people. So I can, like we talked about, set boundaries with someone, but also know that because I'm working on myself, they are gonna get residuals from that. Like a wave is gonna reach them. My love, my compassion, my happiness is going to reach them. Maybe it's just through social media or maybe it's through a secondary interaction, but the ripple effects will take place if you fill your own life with things that bring you joy and happiness and, and do the inner work on yourself, that shadow stuff that you talked about. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with you and resonate with those messages because when, when you take time for you and you are finding your own way and scaling up in the, in the vibrations, I, I call them, that, mm -hmm. that we have, we are going to um, expand those vibrations, as you mentioned, to them. So they are going to connect more uh, easily with us. And we are going to be very mindful and very aware of what is it, the time that I have with this person. So I'm, I'm fully in that place. I'm fully yes. in that experience because I already put my energy, my time, my schedule, everything in that moment. So it is not about checking phone when I'm in the place with you, or mm -hmm. it is not about distracting and not listening because I'm worried about work. No, it is time to have fun. It is time to share. And it is time to that it's going to create quality of time, mm -hmm. which is something that right now many people are uh, not aware of that because they are in the busy mindsets and the, the excuse that I usually find in, in many people is I don't have time. Yes. So what, what yeah. do you do with, with those kind of clients or those kinds of people that you meet and, and they tell you, I don't have time for me? Yeah, you know, I remind them that when we don't have time for us, we, if it's important to you, you find the time. Exactly. And if it's not important to you, then you, that's when you say, I don't have time. And so we really look at their schedule and their day. And, and we say, okay, instead of at night watching TV for an hour, can you spend that hour on yourself? Or can you communicate with your partner and say, Will you do these tasks for the next 30 minutes so I can work on myself? Or will, you know, can I visit my friends tonight and you stay home and watch the kids? So it's that constant communication with the people in your life to support you. I think a lot of us also have a hard time receiving and asking for help. And, and we want to do it all. We want to, there's this society has this like, be a martyr, like you can <laughs> do it, do it all. Yes. And, and that's great. And we can, but we need help. We don't have to go this journey alone. And even if it's just asking your neighbor or, hey, do you think you could mow my grass today? I'm really like, have a lot on my plate and and knowing that there's reciprocity and that you will return the favor in due time but it's being very um mindful and in like learning how to receive that was really hard for me was learning how to receive without saying learning how to receive just to receive and not saying oh i owe you one i owe you i'll i'll get you back next time no like I can receive just to receive because someone wants to give me something or do something nice for me or just, um, yeah. Yes, and, and as you mentioned, 
when you are open to receive, you are willing to give. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just a, a cycle. It's, it's just a cycle, a cycle that, that feeds and that doesn't have to be like, you. I have one, you have the other, and it's just mm -hmm. like um, organic. <laughs> yes, so. it, it just happened to me last week where I was, you know, it's, it's funny because once you go through these lessons, you're like, oh yeah, I got it. I learned that lesson. And then it, it like comes back again and you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I haven't fully grasped it yet because I'm still learning this lesson. It was just last week when I was feeling run down and um, a friend and I were going to exchange some healing work on each other. And so he started working on me first. And after it, I was just too tired and exhausted. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't exchange. I didn't have, I don't feel I am capable of, of doing my best job for you. And he's like, Lisa, that's okay. Just receive the healing that I just provided for you. And even still, I was like, oh, that's still really hard for me just mm. to receive, just to receive. You were worried about not being able to give back in that mm -hmm. moment, no? So yeah, that's also what happens many times when, when we are in those places where probably you have also experienced that when you are in a conversation with a friend and the friend is checking the phone. So I think that when you see those kind of things and you are there, you are fully there and the other person is not really mm -hmm. there. So I think that's also probably the underlying reason. They don't feel that they are free of those of that time to enjoy and they keep constantly distracting yeah. it is unconscious because it is a belief that has been ingrained in them and they just keep coming distracting from those kind of uh, notifications because they don't feel that they deserve being listened or they don't know how to listen for other yeah. people no <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's very hard for people to be present. It, in 2020 kind of helped a little bit with that of slowing yeah. us down a little bit, but you're right. There's a lot of distractions out there and we have a very hard time connecting and, and being present because we're always, our focus is always going in other directions. I was just uh, reading um, an article where it says that the span of attention uh, before it was like eight seconds. Right now, we are up to six seconds in the span of attention. So a goldfish has more attention than our selves. So, wow. and, and I, I really can see those uh, statistics talking because when you upload a video or something, the most time that people can see a video or a podcast or if it is not of course the the big plat platforms or the big coaches people just see them like three seconds and that's the most statistics so that's what that's funny because our brain is filled with so much information and that that is also a, an extremely important part of loving yourself if you don't have space mm -hmm. in your mind, if you are full of those distractions and notifications that we don't really pay attention, we lose power. Yes. We give it away, right? We're giving it away to our phone, to the TV, to the neighbors, to whoever, and, and it becomes energy draining. Yes. We think it's filling us up. I'm just going to relax for, you know, 10 minutes and scroll through my phone. But what we don't realize is it's actually sucking energy out of us because it's distracting our brain and we're not fully present in what we're doing. And yeah, it becomes a real big energy drain. What happens when you have a client that uh, he's injured or she's injured and you pick up those kind of energies that the the wound one thing is the physical wound mm -hmm. but you detect that healing that physical wound 
would take care in a space of being now ready to get in the journey. And probably she's not ready emotionally. So she's delaying the healing. What do you do to, with those kind of clients that you can see that they can heal faster, mm -hmm. but they are just um, refraining themselves? Yeah. From... Yeah, it's a great question. Really try and meet people exactly where they're at, right? So meet them with compassion exactly where they're at. And we do a lot of, um, there's a muscle releasing technique called Emotion Code. It's a book, it's called Emotion Code. And it teaches us how to release trapped emotions, emotions that have been trapped in our body. Um, some of them from inherited and passed down from generation to generation through our DNA and how we can release that from our body. So we don't have to experience the emotion or go through the emotion to release it. We just test our muscles and see, and I can tell which we go through a series of questions to see what emotion is trapped. And so usually we start there because they don't have to experience the emotion, but they can see that we are releasing some trapped emotions in the body because they can feel it through muscle testing. So we start there. And then also as we are working on our exercises and as we are talking about where we're going and I've always remind them where we started and where we are now. So they see the growth hmm. that they've been through and that usually helps them just take kind of one more step, whether that be mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, and then it also helps to know that they have people on their team like I am here to help you grow and if you are not happy with this doctor or this therapist let's talk about it and let's figure out where the disconnect is like if you don't agree with what they're saying if you want to try a new protocol if you want to try a new modality or therapy let's explore all of our options we don't just have to go down path a we can look at path b path c path D and all the way down and find out what is best for them in their process. And then it's also looking at each person as an individual, because each person's healing process is completely different physically, mentally, emotionally, and letting them know that's okay. And reminding them of like, what are your expectations and what is our current reality? And sometimes they match, but sometimes they don't. And also helping them realize the power of our mind, that our mind is so powerful and our thoughts lead to feelings and our feelings lead to behaviors and then behaviors lead to action. And so when we can change our thoughts, then we are able to change our actions. Yes, yes, I agree. that, And I also have a, an example of that because I also had a, a client that was very stuck in the mindset of not being able to detach from the phone. And she told me, it's just that at night, instead of, I already feel tired. I know that I should be sleeping, but I just take the phone and it's one hour or more of scrolling and, of, and then I can sleep. So they already know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And it it seems like a punishment to to not deserving, to not feeling open to to receive the resting time, because they think that resting is not important, mm -hmm. which is also a cultural thing that has been ingrained in us that taking a meditation break, taking some time to have a nap in the afternoon if mm -hmm. you are tired whatever it is that you need, your body's already telling you, you are not concentrated in what you are doing or mm -hmm. you are just making mistakes. Why don't you go out and walk or sleep a little bit and don't feel guilt? What do you do with, with guilt? Yeah, that's, that's a hard one. Guilt is ever present. Yeah. Um, you know, 
guilt is a little bit, that's it's a tricky one because it, it can come up. And so it's also letting us know that um, if, if an emotion is in our nervous system, we need to pass it through our nervous system and let our nervous system know it's okay. And so with guilt, a lot of times we'll work backwards and try and figure out where did this originally come from? Did it come from most things happen in our childhood and whether we learned it in school or at home or from society, we don't realize it could be something very insignificant. And so it's recognizing and, and finding that little nugget of where did this guilt start? And then from there, kind of working forward and saying, okay, well, maybe we don't have to feel guilty about giving back time to ourselves because we know that when we rest, our muscles are able to recover and repair ourselves. Our brain is able to recover. We're able to um, get more energy to spend time with our friends and with our family. And so when we see the benefits of what happens when we, when we do a new activity, then that really helps to calm the nervous system down. And then all of a sudden we see the guilty feelings start to lessen a little bit. But again, with, with any sort of healing, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes repetition yeah. and it takes a lot of time. Yes, yes, I, I agree. And, and my advice on that subject is that um, just taking small pieces of action and recognizing mm -hmm. that, as you mentioned, the nervous system is one of the center hubs that concentrates the, the feelings, the thoughts. And there, there are other two. There is the mm -hmm. second one that is the metabolism. And there is the third one where you integrate all those signals into the vagus nerve and you create more coherence in in that system so all of them are communicating with each other in a matter of seconds yeah and you don't realize that all the images all the sounds all the things that you process through your mind and the senses are going to pass through this three uh, step system that is going to create the the emotional signals and the organic uh, chemical substances that you need to change because many times we don't immediately feel the emotion of pleasure yes. which is what many people look for mm -hmm. because it takes time to generate that emotion and it takes mm -hmm. repetition so just by doing it five minutes and then increasing it that is going to be helpful to create the habit of having five minutes. Yeah. And I think one important thing that we don't do enough of is celebrate our small victories, right? Like you said, tiny incremental steps and celebrating each step along the way. Like I just know for me, I'm not great at technology. I have no interest in technology. Okay. It's not my thing. I like the human body, which oddly is like a technical system in itself, but yeah. <laughs> I was creating a web page the other day and it was a lot of work because yeah. I, and I don't particularly enjoy it, but I did it and I finished it. And I threw myself the biggest party because I created <laughs> one web page, but that is hard for me. And so I knew that I needed to celebrate this small victory so I can move on to the next task and move on with joy and not be drained of it. And so I think help, what helps us is finding little things to celebrate along the way. And it could be celebrating, could just be taking a five minute break or it could be putting on a good song and dancing in your living room, or it could be you know, going out to dinner or so there are many different ways that we can celebrate small victories. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I also struggle sometimes with, with those technologies. And mm -hmm. recently I had a place where I had my videos and I created the subtitles. So I changed the platform. And in the new platform, there are new tricks and you have to learn them. And, and it is draining mm -hmm. a little bit when you are in those struggles with technology. Yes. 
So when I finished the video and I saw it, and I said, it was just a one minute video. But for me, it was very important because I learned a new platform. So I just called my mom and a friend and I said, do you want to see this video? I just want your opinion and that's it, no? So that was my reward Yeah. to share it, no? Yeah. To do it and to and to acknowledge that that I managed to learn a new platform, no? Yes. So. Yeah, because it's hard. So we need to celebrate the hard things because they're hard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that's also that what what is missing in, in many times because people want the shortcuts. No, they are very used to seeing those kind of big uh, announcements that in a weekend you are going to change your life and of course that they trust in those things but it is not a weekend it is just the small things that you are going to do after the weekend mm -hmm. that will really create the change so it is good that you assist to those things but it yeah. is also much better that you create the the habit of doing it and uh, having a reward at the end of the week or at the end of the day and just celebrate those little things no absolutely because let's face it life can be difficult being a parent raising children I don't have children but it is so difficult mm -hmm. raising a human yeah. and raising them to be a conscious loving giving person is difficult so we need to celebrate being a parent and celebrate the kids and celebrate ourselves and making it through a work week or learning a new platform. Very difficult. Like being an entrepreneur, very difficult. <laughs> it's Life can be difficult. And so we need to take the time to, to find the joy and, and, and to celebrate that. Now that you touch on the parent thing that I relate to because I have a, a daughter Mm -hmm. And I know that, I mean, as you mentioned, there is a really different biology and, and beliefs in men and women. And I see a lot more in, in her mom for taking time for herself than I see it in me. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's very easy to, to know that I have the times, the schedules and the things and, and the time that I'm with her. But uh, many times in the realm of the gender of, of women, they think that they have to be the mother of all yes. and they don't deserve time for themselves. So mm -hmm. what do you advise to, to women that feel the guilt of having time for themselves? Because yes. they already care for the children, care for the husband, care for mm -hmm. whatever, but they need time for themselves. No? And that is such a great question. And thank you as a man for saying that and recognizing it because every single one of my mom friends goes through this of at the end of the night, they never take care of themselves and they are so exhausted. And they are doing the career, being the mom, take care of the family and, and friends and, and doing all the things. And I think, you know, just having part of it, just having men support women in their life and telling them, go take care of some your, yourself, whether that be a bath, have a night with your friends, here's a glass of wine, having that masculine structure in their life, um, being supported, so, so key and so, so helpful to the women. Um, as a woman myself and my friends, understanding that kind of what I touched on before is the more we take care of ourselves and replenish our own energy, the more energy we have to give to the family, to friends, to the career, to volunteering, wherever it may be. And, and so sometimes when women understand that and, and also realizing that 
taking care of yourself doesn't just mean like going to the spa or having a bath. It also means um, finding things that you enjoy instead. Like we talked about boundaries, setting boundaries and giving yourself permission. Give yourself permission to um, go for a walk. Give yourself permission that the laundry doesn't have to be done. The <laughs> dishes don't have to all be done. Like give yourself permission to just be sometimes and then we don't have to continually do 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 we can be we can spend an evening playing with our children on the floor and observing them and being present with them even if our house is a disaster right like mm -hmm. let's just give ourselves permission to not be perfect and to be present and to be enjoyable and to enjoy our life and i think for women this is a hard concept because as a gender we have worked so hard just to get to where we are just to be able to have a voice to be able to have a career to be able to be more than someone who just cooks and cleans and takes care of a family to be able to to do anything we want to do we've come a long way but there still is that a little bit of that generational trauma stuck inside of us that we we feel we have to prove ourselves and that we are worthy and that we are can do it all um and a lot of times we end up proving that externally but to who right to who no yeah. one cares yeah. everyone's in the same exact boat as you so it, it's really giving yourself permission to be to be you that you are absolutely perfect just the way you are and enjoy your life and that means taking the night off then take the night off yes yes it's it's really really important that many women that are going to listen because of course the the followers i i have more women than men mm -hmm. following me so i just I give advice more to women mm -hmm. because i know that they need this kind of acknowledgement Mm -hmm. And for the men that can be listening to this, just washing the dishes two or three times a week won't make you less of a man. So mm -hmm. you will really help your partner by giving her time of taking those 20 minutes or 30 minutes mm -hmm. off of many uh, house chores. And she is going to be able to uh, fool their cup of mainly those hormones that are yeah. unbalanced yeah. And, and they need a, a buffering system so that they can give you the best time. So it is like a, a cycle, it can be a healing cycle or can be a toxic cycle. Mm -hmm. The toxic cycle is when you as a woman neglect the time for yourself and want to prove, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that's a neglecting cycle and that's going to be the toxic cycle because you are lowering your energy and you are going to be in a bad mood with your children, with mm -hmm. your uh, husband. So it doesn't make anyone win. But if no. you take time for yourself, you get in the healing cycle, you buffer your hormones, you replenish your energy and you have a better mood for your children and for your partner. So you heal the system. No. Yes. <laughs> yep. And you're teaching your children that. Yeah, that's right? really important. They, what a lot of times they, they are little sponges and we may not be speaking, but they see what we do and they see our actions and they see what we don't say and they see what we do say. So if you get in a little spat with your partner or disagreement, because it happens all the time, sometimes that happens in front of children. But what I find is that a lot of times the children don't actually see the making up from the argument. They see a little bit of the fight, but a lot of times the making up is a conversation that happens in private. Maybe the kids after, went to bed, you know, we'll discuss this later, or, you know, it happens at a separate time. And so we want to be mindful that we want our children to see the good and they want to see the bad, or see the good and see the bad or see the positive and the hard so that they get a well-rounded life and that if they see you taking care of yourselves, taking time for themselves, then that is imprinting on them as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, such a powerful uh, example that you gave because that's very children up to the, the age of seven, or I would say that more many times, mm -hmm. they follow the example. Yeah. So if the woman or if the mom is always stressed and anxious, and then they look for their daughter and they see that she's also anxious or sad, and they don't even know why, mm -hmm. because I just recently had a talk with my daughter and she told me, sometimes I feel sad, but I don't know why do I feel sad. And I told her, well, when you have those moments, just close your eyes, touch your heart and pick up what is going to come because the body, your body and your heart is going to talk to you and it's going to give you the answer. And probably she doesn't know because she's speaking many yeah. of the environment. Mm -hmm. So it may not be her emotions at all. She's picking them up. Yes. So mm -hmm. we have to be mindful of who in the circle is passing on those kind of um, emotions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Kids are so intuitive and they are so smart especially like you said from that seven and under because that's when they haven't been um imprinted yet that. by yeah <laughs> by society and and have learned limiting beliefs and one of my favorite learning tools is just watching little children and how much joy they have how present they are in yeah. what they do and that they don't have limiting beliefs in their mind yet they want to do something they do it when they're bored with it they move on and yes it can be annoying because they go from task to task to task to task <laughs> but it just shows how creative they are and how present they are and that if they can't figure this out they're going to leave it and move on and do this and if someone like I in, I have a niece and nephew and my nephew was about three I think and I was at a family cabin with aunts and uncles and cousins and he was outside playing with a bunch of dogs and he stepped in dog poop so he came inside and he said mom I stepped on dog poop in my shoe and so as his shoe was being cleaned off he was ran out and played with the dogs again one shoe on one shoe off didn't care that he didn't have two shoes and my aunt even pointed out and said oh no you only have one shoe what are you gonna do and he was like I don't care I, who cares You're right he didn't even see the negative in the situation even after someone pointed it out to him because it wasn't a factor and it wasn't negative in his mind and that's just that's how we should all think we should all have these manifesting thoughts and positive thoughts of like, this is what I want to do. So I'm going to do it. I'm not going to stop doing it because someone told me I can't, or someone said something negative. <clears throat> yes. 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 And children forget also a lot of the things that are in the past, even if they are sometimes not pleasant. Mm -hmm. So they, they move faster because as you mentioned, they, they are so, planted on the present moment that even if you try to remind them about the past they say I don't even remember that I did mm -hmm. that or yep. what I had for breakfast no yep. sometimes so it is really really funny and it is really enlightening for us because we live again in a different if we open our eyes of course we are living in a different time zone for mm -hmm. just saying no. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, I also like going back to the children thing, like one thing I observed recently is when children get hurt, they cry, they feel their emotion. They don't suppress it down. They feel it. Maybe they're throwing a tantrum and they get angry. What do we as an adult do? We go to them, we right. open our arms, we expand our energy, we expand our body and we say, come here, I will hug you, I will cuddle you. We wrap them in our arms, in our love, we bring them close, it's okay. We let them cry, we let them feel. And then when the child is 
moved through that emotion, we make sure they're okay, and then we all move on. But when something traumatic happens to us and as an adult, we do not treat ourselves the same way as we treat our children. And why not? Like we should be more compassionate with ourselves and expand our energy and feel our feelings, sit with them for a little bit and then move forward. But instead we become really judgmental and really critical. Oh, we don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, get up, don't cry, move on, move on, move forward, move forward. But that's not how we treat little kids. And we teach them how to heal and feel properly, but yet somehow we lose that as an adult and we just pick up and move on. Yes. And also those come from childhood experiences, no? Mm -hmm. Because if you never see your parents crying, if you never yeah. see your parents mm -hmm. dealing with, with those emotions um, and being okay mm -hmm. with those emotions, then of course you are going to uh, reflect those emotions yes. to them. Yes. And as an adult, you see that crying is not okay or staying in that face is not okay, no? <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Again, we learn from our parents. Yes, so, mm -hmm. and as we mentioned just right now, the, these kind of emotions, and I saw your, your dog was barking, they pick <laughs> up also those kind of things. So mm -hmm. when, when even discussing these things, Animals pick up those vibrations of the emotions and children and are the same way. Yes. So this is a perfect example of how even speaking about things is going to prime the sensitive kind of animals or people. No? Mm -hmm. so. Yep. We feel our energy expands before our, our mind does. So they feel that change in energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to, to start wrapping up the, the subject of healing or producing health, what would you say is the most important message that you want to convey or deliver for, for women in order mm -hmm. to, to produce the health, to, yeah. to really um, accept the love? Yeah. You know, I think the message is that we are enough, right? Who you are today in this moment is beautiful. It is perfect. It is exactly who you are meant to be. And come back, like you had mentioned, come back to your heart, sit for a moment with your breath, with your heartbeat and ask yourself, who am I? And who is that person inside of you because that person inside of you has so much love to give and is so special and is so wanted and needed in this world because every single person has their unique strengths and gifts and abilities and this world needs every single one of us because we are providing something for this world and for our family and for our community. And, and so that starts with recognizing that inside of you and just knowing that you are worthy and you are enough and you are everything you need to be. You are your own hero. And, and that, I feel that message is really powerful for women. And, and I'll, we talked a lot about the self-care and how important it is to making sure that you are filling yourself up with what fills your soul, because at that point you will be able to give that to your loved ones. Yes, beautiful, beautiful message. And also I just want to highlight the importance of that heart and mind connection that, that we have. I just was uh, reading also an article because I'm writing uh, another book. Mm. And it is about the five pillars and ingraining those systems in your in your health. So in speaking about the inner self connection, the heart and mind is seen from the Buddhism and from the Chinese uh, philosophy that goes back to the Tao system as a sacred place. 
Yes. It is a place. It is not an organ. It is a place that we have inside of us. It is making the energy of our souls to connect. And as you mentioned, it is your heart that receives first the emotions, first the vibrations, and then it goes to the brain. And it, it is a communication system, bidirectional communication system that is going to expand the coherence to the other organs and is going to give it signals. So the more you care for your heart, for what yes. you are feeling, for those times of feeling worthy, as Lisa mentioned, you are going to uh, honor your, your body and your mind, and it is going to create a healing system. So health Absolutely. starts health starts with recognizing that you deserve the love. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it better, David. That is so perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, everyone, for connecting with us. If you have a question, if you want to um, go and connect with Lisa, I will have the links below the, the video and the podcast. And of course, you are welcome to give us your comments and your questions, and we will address them in the next episode. <laughs> awesome. I hope everyone enjoyed this and they take away something from this special hour that we had together. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. And we will listen to each other on our next episode. Bye. <laughs>